Hello friends, Tattooed Biker here with you, and tonight I've got true stories, detailing terrifying and unexplained experiences in the deep woods. Now I don't know if these were cryptids, extraterrestrial, supernatural, or maybe something else entirely, but we're going to listen to these brave souls tell their stories, and maybe together we can shed some light on what's really out there. So now, let's ride into the deep woods. Number one. Dear TB, I'm fairly new to YouTube, and I only discovered this channel recently. Using a throwaway email account here because I didn't feel comfortable enough sharing this from my main account. I've lurked for a little while, and I think it's the perfect place to share the story of an experience I had about nine or ten years ago. The reason I'm sharing it here is because A, that's the point of your channel, and I've enjoyed hearing others' experiences, but also B, to see if anyone has had a similar experience or idea of what this could have been, because I never have. Full disclosure before I start, I've told this story to lots of people over the years, friends, family, and Facebook groups. Even told acquaintances whenever supernatural or scary stuff has come up in conversation. But I've always left out the finer details on purpose because, honestly, I think I have some latent trauma from it. I don't like going into detail about it or reliving this experience. Instead, I have only ever recounted this as a 60-second scary story to elicit a reaction, probably just as a coping mechanism. My girlfriend is the only person that I've ever told the full story. To be clear, I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything here. You can believe what you want, and I respect your opinion, but I'm also not going to debate or argue over something that I know is true. This experience happened when I was wild camping on my own in a forest in Wales. I live in England, near the Welsh border. This is something I've done dozens of times and continue to do to this day. I think it was April or May of 2013 or 14. Weather was unseasonably good and this was the second of three nights that I'd planned for my trip. Although it ended up being the last. First night and second day had been great. Got a lovely long hike and followed by a pub lunch. I'd driven back to the area that I was staying and I was now back at my tent. I settled down for the night, read a book had some beers and went to sleep. It was probably between 11 p.m. and midnight. I was just in that state where you're semi-conscious, about to drift off, but haven't quite just yet. I slowly became aware of a strange noise somewhere outside the tent. It didn't sound that close, but maybe within 50 feet or so. It sounded like someone perfectly humming a tune. After listening for a couple of minutes, it was definitely... Somebody humming a tune. When I say perfectly, I mean just that. It sounded like a professional singer or something because it was perfectly in tune. No voice breaks or falters at all. I can't remember whether it sounded like a man or a woman. At this point, I'm really worried because it's just incredibly creepy. Like something from some kind of horror film. I hadn't left my tent at this point and the humming hadn't gotten any louder. It just stayed a distant background noise. I didn't know what to do, but I knew that I couldn't just stay there forever, so I mustered the courage to open my tent as slowly and quietly as I could to see if I could tell where the noise was coming from. Within five seconds of me poking my head out of the tent, the humming stopped. It didn't fade away or anything. It just stopped dead, as if someone had pressed pause on a recording. I'm still very on edge at this point, but at the same time, I assume that's just what it is. Somebody playing a prank on a solo camper with an audio recording. I literally just couldn't think of any other explanation. Based on that assumption, I shouted something like, You're not funny. Screw off. That made me feel a bit better because it felt like I'd addressed this issue. I don't know, but for whatever reason, it helped my nerves a bit at the time. I let that hang in the air for like 10 more seconds while my head is still poking out of the tent and it stays quiet. 
I'm rather satisfied by this point, so I begin moving back in. As I'm reaching for the tent zipper, though, the humming starts again. Same tune, but much louder, much closer, and from the completely opposite direction. My heart completely sinks because there's no way someone could have moved from the first source of the noise to the second without me seeing or hearing something. It's literally impossible. It was completely quiet in the woods, not even a breeze against the leaves, and yes, it was dark, but I could still see short distances thanks to the moonlight. In the back of my mind, though, my subconscious is clearly working overtime, trying to rationalize this, and I guess I must have assumed that there were multiple pranksters out there with multiple audio recordings. I can't exactly remember what my thought process was at this point because it's truthfully all a blur, but for one reason or another, I stormed angrily out of the tent towards the now rather loud sound. It sounded as if the person humming was within like ten feet of the tent. I got up out of the tent, turned towards the noise ready to scream at the perpetrator or even attack if necessary. That's when I see this humanoid figure silhouetted against the tree line, maybe 15 feet from me. My best description of it is this. It was a large, thin figure that was shaped like a human, but way too tall in proportion, very wrong. It was huge. I would guess well over seven feet. Its limbs were unnaturally long like it had been stretched in all directions. Its head appeared very small and round. I think the figure was gray in color, but I can't 100% be sure because of the poor visibility. I couldn't make out much of its face at all. It just seemed to be shrouded in shadow. I definitely didn't notice any features like eyes, mouth, or nose. It was standing quite still, facing towards me. I say quite still because there was some movement in the same way that a person or animal would sway back and forth or make some minor body movements if they were standing up. This was a real, living thing, and I know that for a fact, not an illusion, not a prop or a prank. This thing was standing right in front of me and was aware of my presence. I'm literally paralyzed by fear at this point, and I've never felt anything like it before or since. Just a primal terror, which had left me cold, shaking, just standing there, quite literally unable to move. I distinctly remember thinking that I need to get away, but I couldn't physically move my body. It was easily the most terrified that I've ever been. As I first laid eyes on this creature, the humming stopped and immediately it started humming again, but not a song. It started softly singing my name in what sounded like my voice. I know that sounds ridiculous, and I swear that's how I remember it. Even though it was singing in my voice, though, it didn't sound exactly right. The syllables were just a bit off, as though a non-human had heard speech once and was trying to mimic it for the first time and doing poorly. I know I haven't described it that well, but I don't think I know the words to do so. This couldn't have gone on for more than about ten seconds, but it felt like forever. Me standing there, this creature standing there motionless and singing my name. At some point, though, every cell in my body just switched and I managed to turn and run as fast as I ever have in the opposite direction. For maybe two straight minutes, I was literally sprinting through the woods in just my socks and PJs with absolutely no other thought in my mind than putting distance between myself and that thing. I had no idea which direction I was going or how I'd ever make it back to my tent. When I eventually stopped, I just leaned against this tree, panting for ages. The forest was still completely silent. I must have stayed by that tree for about two hours, waiting for my heart rate to settle, trying to calm down and decide what to do. I didn't want to go back to my tent. I was quite happy to leave all my stuff there, but I needed my phone and car keys to get home. I was several miles away from anywhere. I eventually made my way back slowly. It wasn't too hard to navigate back to my tent in those woods because the tree distribution wasn't very dense. I also hadn't gone as far as I first feared. 
Once back at my tent, I grabbed just my phone and keys and went back to my car as fast as I was comfortable. Spent the rest of the night sitting in the back seat on my phone, shaking. Didn't even try to get any sleep. Once the sun was up, I managed to go back and pack my stuff up and then left as quickly as I could. After that, I took a two-year break from solo camping, something I normally did every three or four months. So that's my experience. Make of it what you will. That has stayed with me ever since, and I know that always will. I don't know what was in those woods with me that night, but it has scarred me and transformed the way I think about everything. If anyone has ever encountered anything similar to what I described, I'd be very interested to hear. Thanks for reading, and sorry this was so long. Signed, Anonymous. Number two. Hi, TB. I've debated sharing this for a long time, but never got around to it. Mainly because I try to keep this memory out of my brain. This might be a long one, but this is a creepy thing that happened to me about four years ago. For starters, I grew up in southwest Saskatchewan and moved on to my aunt's farm in 2019 to live in the other house that's on her property. The house is fairly old, but I loved it. It wasn't long after I moved in, though, that I started to feel uneasy in the house alone. I would close every window when it got dark as if it felt like something was watching me through them every night. Eventually, I decided to get a puppy to keep myself company when my boyfriend at the time was at work or away from the house. It helped to have company, but I always dreaded having to take her outside when it was dark. For a bit of scene setting, our house sat on the left side of a gravel road. At the back of the house, there was about 10 meters of backyard, and then there was a cow pasture in the cow barn. We didn't own cows, but in the summer, another farmer would rent our pasture space, and so we would have them on the property. It wasn't uncommon at night to hear coyotes surround the farm either, and there were tons. Every so often, when I'd go out with my puppy, we'd hear them all around us, too close for comfort. We had a farm dog, too, who would keep the coyotes away for the most part, as she was huge, but every so often she'd wander elsewhere on the property to scout, and the coyotes would get a little too close for comfort. They always tried to lure my puppy out to them, but luckily I kept her leashed. Now one thing you should know about my pup is it takes her forever to find a spot to go potty. This was still a problem today, four years later, but back then it was the bane of my existence. She would pace for at least five minutes, and it was only after finding a suitable spot. Sometimes we would be out there for damn near half an hour, just so she would go, and not in the house. Another problem of hers. Huskies, am I right? On this particular night, it was raining pretty heavy. I wasn't happy to be out there, and she had decided that she wasn't going to go until she found the perfect spot. We had already been out there for 15 minutes, and at this point she was also getting frustrated with the rain and wanted to go inside. But I wanted her to go before we went in, since we'd already been out there for so long. So, as any annoyed puppy mother would do, I started getting a little frustrated and would repeat, go, go potty every time she'd get distracted from the objective. It was dark. I was cold and annoyed, and to make matters worse, the cows behind us were fussing fairly loudly. This was out of the ordinary for them. They were usually quiet and sleeping at this time of night. I was also hearing what sounded like a strange bird whistling, but shook it off as probably just being an owl. I tried to keep it off my mind as I kept shouting and pleading go through the rain to my small, fuzzy, white asshole. I was facing away from the pasture, and suddenly, in my left ear, I heard it. Go. Now, one thing you should know about me is I have a very strong fight-or-flight response, typically. But this froze me on the spot, as I was mostly confused at what I'd just heard. I tried telling myself that I just didn't hear it. I tried telling myself that it was just a move from a cow that I'd heard wrong. 
But again, as if spoken directly behind me, I heard it again. Go. Go. It sounded unnatural. It was as if it came from someone who had never spoken a word before. A raspy, deep, monotone go. It almost sounded like it was coming out of an old radio, but of course, there were no radios out there. Every time it said it, it sounded the exact same as the first time it was said. And whatever it was had started repeating it as if it had been taught its new favorite word. At this point, I spun around to the pasture to find nothing there. Then again from behind me, go. This all had happened in the span of about three seconds, and at this point I remember shouting out loud, All right, don't tell me twice. As I grabbed my little furball and made a mad dash from my front door, I swiftly locked both doors behind me and sat bewildered in my kitchen. Puppy went back to puppying immediately, obviously unbothered by it all, and happy that Mom wasn't making her stay out in the rain any longer. I picked up my phone and called my aunt, asking her if my uncle had been out in the field with the cows. She said no, and I explained to her what had just happened to me. She sent my uncle over to the pasture to check it out, but soon after told me he hadn't seen or heard anything. He said he'd check the pasture again in the morning. I spent the night hiding from the windows with the lights and TV on loud enough not to hear anything outside. The next morning, when my uncle checked on the pasture, he found two calves dead. Explains the colossal cow panic that had ensued the night before. I regret this, but I didn't push for more info, as I honestly just didn't want to know. But they told me, other than that, they didn't find anything out of the ordinary. A few months later, I moved off the farm. I just couldn't be in that house alone anymore, and my boyfriend and I had parted ways. A few months after that, I started going to therapy for the paranoia this had caused me. I started feeling like people were watching me all the time, out to get me. Another few months after that, I moved out of the province for good and finally felt safe. I'm wondering if any of you have any idea what the hell this could have been. There's no chance there would have been someone in our field as we were really far away from town and any neighbors, and we have cameras that would have seen anyone near our property. Coyotes are common, but I don't think they're capable of mimicking words. Any ideas? Now, since moving, I've Had some weird related things happen as well, but I can save that for another time. Thank you all. Signed, Danielle. Number three. Dear Tattooed, I want to tell you what happened the very first time I went to my boyfriend's family's house. We explored the very wooded areas around the house. Some 30 acres of land. Some hunters go in, but no hikers and only old logging trails, which the original owner of the house probably created. A lot of the trails aren't very well maintained, with brush and logs all over them. One area my boyfriend wanted to show me was off-trail. Now, I hate walking off-trail. I hate bushwhacking, and this was in the spring, so there were ticks. He brings me to a huge boulder he calls Dragon Mountain. A normal boulder near a very small stream. He climbs up and then helps me up. It was much taller than me, but by no means gargantuan. We sit on the boulder, then lie down, looking up into the trees talking. I'm on the left, he's on the right. I don't remember if we heard the crunching of leaves first or saw them first, but to our east, three adult men, all wearing black or dark navy blue from head to toe, in sunglasses, are walking toward the boulders, carrying a large, long, black tube. All three of them are carrying it together, and none of them are talking. They are just walking, carrying this thing. My boyfriend and I are extremely still. We didn't get the urge to say hello or say anything to them, like we would to normal people we would encounter hiking in the woods. They're walking towards us, but 
we don't think they can see us because we're lying in a sort of large divot in the top of the boulder. We can hear them talking as they walk behind where we are. Then they are to our southwest, very near the boulder, and they stop completely. They don't talk or make any noise. Naturally, my boyfriend and I stay silent and still. We're looking at each other, trying to take this in. It felt like a long time that there were no walking noises. Then the men walk sort of around to the left of us and the boulder. Then they walked off towards our northwest. They were still not talking at all, just walking through the woods, holding their big black tube. We were very weirded out for a long time after this, and we got out of those woods pretty quickly, in a direction away from them, opting to get to the road and follow that home, instead of taking the quickest route towards the house, which was pretty much in their direction. We've both racked our brains for years about this, coming up with all kinds of explanations. My boyfriend later realized that the direction they came from is from a major highway, where there's a fence as well. We conjectured that they may have been hunters, with the black tube being some kind of device to carry a deer, but a lot of hunters live around there, and they tend to wear camouflage and orange, not all black or navy or dark colors in general. I get if they were hunting, they would likely be quiet, but why did they take a fair amount of noise with their footsteps? And then why did they stop? It just didn't seem like three normal guys going through the woods. I forget about the encounter periodically, but when I suddenly remember it, I can't explain why I felt the way I felt. We both had this instinct to hide and be silent. Thanks for reading. Signed, Rita. Narrator's note. I emailed Rita back and asked for any more details and perhaps some conclusion to the experience, i.e. what happened after, and she sent this response. Dear Biker, Writing you for the first time has uncovered more memories of this day for me. I'm sorry I ended the last email so abruptly. When I was writing, I suddenly felt overwhelmed for some reason. Now, a few more details for your request. For one thing, though it was extremely disconcerting that the men never talked or even looked at each other as a work crew, hunters, or friends would, I remember them not having identical dress. One had a dark navy t-shirt, while the other wore a black t-shirt. I remember their faces and their builds indicating that they were three distinct individuals. And I don't remember them moving in the same exact ways, which gives me some relief. What I do remember now, and I wish I didn't, is that after they had passed us to our left and were facing away from us, I sat up on the boulder and looked at their backs as they walked away. At this point, they must have been 30 yards from me, not looking at us. I watched them until I couldn't see them anymore. I was just intensely curious, and immediately afterwards, I scolded myself for such a reckless move because they could have seen me but didn't. I was wearing a white sweater and a pink headband, so I would have been very visible against the brown leaves and the gray boulder. I instantly regretted my decision to look not really knowing why, but knowing I was lucky to have not been spotted. I cringe now just thinking I did that. Why didn't I just continue to hide? Later that night, my boyfriend, his brother, and I were the only ones at the house. We had a fire in the fire pit near the tree line of the woods we had entered that afternoon. We had some beers, and my boyfriend and his brother were relaxed, and I, on the other hand, was extremely anxious. At one point, I literally ran inside the house and upstairs to my boyfriend's room, where my body started shaking uncontrollably, to the point that all I could do was sit down. I texted my boyfriend to come up because I needed help. He attributed my condition to the alcohol and it being a little chilly outside. I thought it was a symptom of severe anxiety. But looking back, I think I was just really scared and my body was processing what happened that day. Notably, my boyfriend always hated talking about it. As I said in the post, he threw out some theories about hunters or work crews, but he never looked at me when I brought up the topic, 
and even now won't speak much on the matter. I know this isn't the usual kind of story that you share here, but to me it was definitely unexplained and certainly frightening. Thanks for letting me share. Signed, Rita. And there it is. Three unexplained and unsettling true stories from the deep woods. What did you think about these? If you have any theories, I'd love to read your thoughts down in the comments below, but please keep it respectful, as the submitters themselves will probably read those comments, searching for some kind of answers. Anyways, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay curious, stay vigilant, stay safe, and I'll be seeing you on down the road a ways. Biker, out. <laughs>